Hello there. In this video we're going to discuss a few theorems associated to the visibilities of integers. So recall that a divisor of a number a in the set of integers is such that there exists another integer k in the set of integers such that when you divide d into a we get another integer k. For example, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 5 divided by 2 is 2 plus 1 half, and 1 half as we know is not an integer. So another way of writing this is saying that a, the number that we're dividing d into, can be represented by the product of the divisor and another integer. So we're going to look at a few theorems that are associated with this that are going to be a little bit more important later. I want to first start off by listing just some of the basic properties of divisors um, that there are, and you can prove these uh, if you want to as an exercise. So the first basic property of divisors is the following, that 1 is a divisor for all integers a. That is the first. Also, a is a divisor for all a and z, but we have to make an exception that a is not equal to 0. The third. So let us define the set s sub a to be equal to the divisors of a. So of course s a is not empty because we know that 1 and a are both in this set a. Um, and there may be some other ones that are between 1 and a, of course. So let us also define the set b to be equal to the set of all divisors of b. So we have two sets, s a and s b, and both of them are non-empty, and both of them are finite, right? So those are both easy to see. So then we define the greatest common divisor of a and b, so greatest common divisor, divisor of a and b is equal to the maximum value that is in both of these sets. So namely the intersection of SA and SB. And clearly this number always is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to the maximum of a and b. Right? So those are all easy um, to stipulate. All right, so let's look at the first theorem that we're going to go ahead and prove, um, which is probably um, very useful, and you may already be familiar with it, uh, when we talk about irreducible fractions and such. And the theorem goes like this. So we're going to begin by letting a and b uh, both be in the set of integers, and we can, without loss of generality, assume that both of these are positive. Um, because if one is negative and one is positive, then we can always factor out a negative one, no big deal. And if both are negatives, then their quotient is positive, so we can sort of treat them as positives uh, only. And let us assume uh, that the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to some number d. So then the greatest common divisor of the numbers a divided by d and b divided by d is equal to 1. And it's uh, already stipulated that a over d and b over d are integers because it, we're assuming that d divides into both a and b, right? Um, so a, and d, a over d and b over d are by default are integers with that assumption. So if that is the case, sometimes we refer to these numbers as being relatively prime. If their greatest common divisor is equal to 1. All right, so if you want to take a moment and see if you can prove this on your own, uh, definitely uh, give it a go. And then you can sort of look at uh, this approach. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume that E divides both A over D and B over D. Um, so why am I going to assume that E divides both A over D and B over D? So if the greatest common divisor of both of these is 1, that means the only possible value that E must have must be 1. So we're going to try and get a relation on E and try and force that to be 1 somehow, right? All right, so with that assumption, then what do we know? So that means uh, A over D divided by E is equal to some integer K1, 
and b over d divided by e is equal to some integer k2, right? So k1 and k2 are in the set of uh, positive integers, right? So if this is the case, then that means a divided by d is equal to uh, k1e and b divided by d is equal to k2e. All right, so continuing to rearrange, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by e. So I have that a is equal to k1 times ed, and b is equal to k2 times ed, right? And I'm going to associate ed, uh, so you can pretty much see a very important characteristic here, right? So what does this mean? So this means, so from these both upper, uh, statements, that de, that number, divides both a and b. Now this is important. All right, we'll come back to the statement later. So recall from our assumptions that d is the greatest common divisor of a and b, and both of these are um, greater than or equal to 1. And let us bring that statement that we just proved uh, into the mix. And also DE is a common divisor of both A and B. Alright, so if D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, and DE is a common divisor of A and B, what does that mean in terms of their size and comparisons? So if that is the case, then that means d must be less than or equal to d, because d is the greatest common divisor of the two, and d is just a common divisor, so that means d must be less than or equal to d, uh, d, right? All right, so remember that all of these things must be um, greater than one, right? Uh, but we'll bring that statement into the mix later. So I'm just gonna divide both sides by d, and remember d must be greater than or equal to one, so this is not gonna be equal to zero. So that means we get e is less than or equal to 1. So by properties of divisors, e must be greater than or equal to 1 also. So we have 1 is less than or e must be less than or equal to 1. So the only possible integer value that e could be was be that e is equal to 1. So if that is the case, then that means 1 is the only uh, divisor of a over d and b over d which means that the greatest common divisor of a over d and b over d is equal to 1. All right, so let's take a look at a, another theorem uh, that is a little interesting. Um, so let's assume that a and b are, again, both um, positive integers. And let's assume that k1 and k2 are also uh, any integer as well. Then. Let us assume that a over c, let's assume a over c and b over c are integers, which means c divides a and c divides b, and it's not necessarily true that c is the greatest common divisor of a and b, but it is a common divisor of the two. So then, if both of those are integers, then the following is true. So a k1 plus b k2 divided by c also is an integer. So that means that if c divides a and c divides b, that means c divides the linear combination of a and b, um, where the linear combination coefficients are uh, integers, right? So that's interesting. All right, so if you want to give this a go, uh, definitely uh, give it a try. So we're going to assume uh, what's given in the proposition. We're going to assume that a over c and b over c are integers. Um, if this is the case, that means there exist uh, numbers l1 and l2 in the set of integers, uh, such that uh, a is going to be equal to l1c and b is going to be equal to l2c. Right. So if I add these two together, then I'm going to get that a plus b is going to be equal to l1c plus l2c, which is the same thing as c times l1 plus l2, right? So clearly if a divides b, so here's a little corollary uh, that we get, uh, that if uh, uh, c divides a 
and c divides b, uh, then c divides uh, a plus b, right? So that would be the proof of that statement, right? So now we're going to uh, just spice this up just a tad bit um, to prove the theorem at hand. So if I multiply a by k1, so k1a plus k2b, and see what this is, what do we get? So that's going to be equal to L1K1C plus L2K2C, which is going to be equal to C times L1K1 plus L2K2. Right? So remember this here is just an integer k, so I can define this to be equal to C times k, uh, where k is just some integer, because remember, integers are closed under addition and multiplication. Right? So that means this thing, so we have k1a plus k2b divided by c is equal to k, which is in the set of integers, which means c divides this linear combination of a and b, um, which is what we sought out to prove. All right, so the next theorem, so theorem 3. Now this one may seem a little strange uh, at first. So again, we're going to let a and b, and we're also going to let k uh, be equal to an integer. And we're going to be focusing on the greatest common divisor. So the greatest common divisor of a plus kb and b is just going to be equal to the greatest common divisor of a and b. And this theorem is going to be extremely useful um, for another proof that we're going to do soon. Right? Now before I go ahead and do this proof, I just want to sort of give a couple examples on how this actually can be used in practice. So let's just replace a couple numbers just to sort of get an idea of how it works. So the greatest common divisor, let's do 7 plus 3 times 5 and 5. So by this theorem, this says this is going to be equal to the greatest common divisor of 7 and 5. So this term here, so the greatest common divisor, so that's going to be 15 plus 7, so that's going to be 22. So the greatest common divisor of 22 and 5 is going to be equal to the greatest common divisor of 7 and 5. So maybe, okay, this 22 may be a sufficiently large number to you. So using this theorem, you can maybe bring it down to some smaller numbers um, that is maybe a little bit easier to work with. Uh, and I can do an easy uh, example for that. Suppose I have the greatest common divisor of, say, 53 and 47. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 47 into 53 and sort of break that down. So that's going to be the greatest common divisor of 6 plus 1 multiplied by 47. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the greatest common divisor of that with 47. So by this theorem, this is just going to be equal to the greatest common divisor of 6 and 47. So we know the divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. And 47, well, 47 we know breaks down into 1. It's not even, so it's not divisible by 2. 7 plus 4 is 11, so it's not divisible by 3. And since it's not divisible by 2 or 3, it's not divisible by 6. Uh, and trivially, it's divisible by 47. So clearly, we see that the divisors of 1, uh, 6 and 7 are only 1. Uh, so the greatest common divisor is going to be equal to 1. Now, you can do that for 53 and 47, of course. But of course, you need the divisors of 53 and 47. And sometimes, um, that's not so easy. All right, so let's give this proof a go. All right, so we're going to begin by letting uh, a, b, and k uh, both be in the set of integers. Um, let's assume c is a uh, common divisor of uh, a and b. So if a, if c is a common divisor of a and b, um, that means this also includes the greatest common divisor in that discussion as well. But it could be, you know, in this case, you know, 1, um, it could be 2 maybe, but C is just going to be a common divisor, so that's going to, of course, going to be including the greatest common divisor. All right, so if that is the case, and C is a divisor of A and B, uh, and it's common between both A and B, that that means A divided by uh, C and uh, B divided by C both are in the set of integers. Right? So that means there exists uh, k1 and k2 in the set of integers, uh, such that a is equal to k1c uh, and b is equal to k2c. Right? So that's what uh, the assumption is. Now you actually don't need these k1 and k2s, but that's at least what we're saying here. All right, so let's recall just a small thing. So if c divided 
a and b, then uh, c divides their integer linear combination, right? So it divides their linear combination, so that means uh, C divides into uh, L1A plus L2B. Um, so this is integer provided that L1 and L2 are in the set of integers, right? So if that is the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose uh, L1 to be equal to 1, and I'm going to choose L2 to be equal to K, where K is, is the assumed integer at the very beginning. Um, so this means... Uh, that C divides into uh, A plus K B, right? Now this is um, part of what we want, right? So C divides A plus K B, and the assumption already says that B divides C in, uh, in the set of integers as well, right? So C divides into B, so B over C is the set of integers, right? So since C is an arbitrary divisor, uh, C also includes the greatest divisor of the two. So that means uh, the greatest common divisor of A plus KB and B is the same as the greatest common divisor of A and B, right? Because remember, C was a common divisor of A and B from assumption. Here, C is a arbitrary common divisor of A plus KB and B. So we can choose that uh, arbitrary uh, divisor to be the greatest common divisor of the two. And that gives us the conclusion that we want. All right. So these are just some uh, very important uh, properties, especially this last one uh, associated to the divisibility of integers. And we're going to revisit these theorems a little bit later. So hope you enjoyed.